Good morning. My morning, name Jeff. is Janice Benoit, and I'm from Halliburton United Church. And we want to welcome everybody who is in the pews today and uh, those people who are listening online. And a special hello and welcome to Lily, who is Doug Beatty's granddaughter. Think, and he brought his mummy and his daddy too. She brought her mummy <laughs> and daddy too. <laughs> 18 months old. What a sweetheart. We welcome any visitors with, this, with us this morning. Your presence is a blessing. Please allow our church family to be a blessing to you. Um, before we open with the opening prayer, I'd just like to uh, commend uh, Harry, Melissa, Craig, and Maggie on the amazing uh, concert that we were at last night, and uh, it was it, with proceeds to uh, search, and uh, the community turned out in full throttle, yeah. and Harry, the whole gang were just amazing. The music was amazing, so thank you for that. <laughs> I think it was a hoot and nanny. I'm not sure what. Yeah. <laughs> Could have been a hoot and nanny, yeah. So, we'll begin now with the opening prayer. O oh God, whose beauty is oh, beyond our imagining. I got, the, I got the wrong prayer. I didn't get it up. So, let's do this one. <laughs> yep. Merciful, Merciful God, God, you, you call, call us to be salt of the earth, earth and light, light of the world. world. We, we confess that our witness is often bland and gloomy. Forgive, forgive us when we fail to be an influence for good. And, and when, when we condone, condone or do what is wrong in your, in your sight. sight, help us, help us to, to flavor the earth with righteousness and, and to reflect the light of your love in a dark world. Through Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Amen. <clears throat> Thanks, Janice. Yep, already my first mistake of the day. I put the wrong prayer up. <laughs> That's on me. Um, okay, I got a couple of things to talk about. Um, just the, we, the elders had our meeting last. This, oh, welcome, everybody. Hi out there. I was going to say we've got 26 concurrent viewers, um, which is a whole lot more than we have. We have like 11 in church. <laughs> We're a little quiet. We need you to come back into the pews here. Um, we've got, uh, I've got Peggy out there, Sharon Wilson Carr, Leslie Banner, Cheryl Wilson, Maggie Thompson, Joy Cooper, uh, Barb Peel, Ernie and Linda Collette, Jen Wayne Cox, Jen Tedford, and Blair Hampton, Lynn Bertrand. Um, she's got family with her this weekend. It's a family weekend. Oh, happy family day weekend, guys, to one and all. Uh, Liz, Liz and Gary Matthews, they're saying they're in Minden, but I'm correcting them and saying they're in Lutterworth. And uh, Lori Brown's out there and Lisa Harrison. So uh, we have a good gang online. So... Um, we, so we had the, uh, the elders are, have been thinking about and talking, well, we've been doing this for the last three years about the whole COVID restrictions thing. And we are thinking about maybe pulling back on the mask restrictions um, sometime in the spring, Easter-ish or maybe something like that. So, uh, but we'd like input on that. So if people, like, we know some people stay away because they can't wear a mask or they stay away because they, they're, they're supposed to wear a mask and they just don't like that. Or some people stay, well, might stay away if we stop having the mask mandate. So we're between a rock and a hard place a bit. So we, <laughs> oh yeah, you, you certainly, everybody can wear a mask and you'd be encouraged to wear a mask, but we would, we would maybe say you don't have to. So that's kind of where we're thinking. We, we need to, we're looking for some feedback about that. We also have a committee. So this, uh, the mission of the month is youth, Emergency shelter in Peterborough, yes. So, um, uh, so each month we we have a we have a group that picks. Uh, you know, we look through various missions and uh, we pick that mission a month. So, if anybody's interested in that, it's it's kind of a rewarding thing to see and to 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 see who who we can help out. Um, we're looking for people to join that group. So that's just something else. Then, in addition, last week uh, I threw up the slides of the the. Isolated men's breakfast, but you know what? I forgot some. The Cornish slides. So I felt bad. So we're going to do it now. Let's see what we got. 
There he is, and she is. So, you know, it's supposed to be, you know, couples thing. So there's Paul and Nancy. Do you see that? Machu Picchu in Peru in 2013. They were, they were hiking in the Andes. Great picture. Uh, oh, I've got, I've got the power here myself. I could just do this. Might as well get prized. And there, ah, aren't they sweet? Paul and Nancy mentioned it. So I guess that was in the same journey, or it's the same shirt. They, look, they were so much younger then. <laughs> and here's Paul doing the isolated breakfast. He's a little sad because he was actually isolated. Usually he's got his gang of like six or four or five or six guys in Peterborough. So they weren't able to make it. So there he was having his uh, uh, blueberries and pancakes and, and studying the Word of God. So there. Sorry for missing you last week, Paul. I don't even know if he, he's not on here today. He's off, but uh, he'll catch up on it. Um, okay, let's, uh, let's, we're going to run a, it's, it's Transfiguration Sunday. I will talk about that a bit more. So we got to, uh, and this is the last Sunday in Epiphany. So we've got, I got a little video to go with that with uh, Melissa's playing some music ministry. Thanks, Melissa. Lovely. Lovely piece. Um, we're going to sing. Uh, we've already heard uh, an instrumental version, if you were listening before the service started today. Shine, Jesus, shine. Let's, I'm going to crank the guitar up on this one. Send forth your word. Yep. Let's stay, let's stand up. Get a little.
<laughs> okay, let us continue to worship the Lord as we present our offerings. I thought uh, Jim and Donna were at the show last night, so they probably need to uh, get up and help us out this morning. One more, Jim, Jim, good to see you there. And Donna, Chipper, Chipper after that show. All right. We give thee but thy own, water and save thee. All that we have is not alone. Our soul overcome. Well, we're up to 12 now. It's like 12 disciples. We've got, you know, the church is filled right up. Um, <laughs> so, prayer time. Um, I don't have Lynn here today to help me, but. People can type in, is there any, any, oh, Nancy and Paul and greetings from Peterborough. So they were there. Um, so uh, Jen Burke from Peterborough has asked for prayers for Heather Wilson, she, she's related to, who has cancer, possibly palliative. So um, Heather Wilson has been added. Um, oh, so I, I've got, I, last week I mentioned Kim R. This is Kim Roberts, um, our Peggy my uh, niece. And she's, uh, she's actually got leukemia, and she's in Kingston Hospital, so um, keep her in prayer. She had some serious surgery last week, um, but she needs prayer. Any other requests or comments? A lot of stuff going on in the world, which, uh, you know, we, we'll be praying about um, the, the earthquake. Um, They're still finding survivors. That's, that's, they found somebody yesterday. They found somebody yesterday, yeah. It's like almost two weeks. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. But so much loss. So, yeah. Um, anything else? Okay. Let us pray. <coughs> Our Lord, we thank you for this day and this time together. You call us to prayer. And you teach us to pray. You command us to pray. We get to pray. Lord, and uh, Lord, this is how we... Uh, we relieve our burdens because we cast them on you because you care for us. Thank you for your promises. Thank you for access to the Father, Christ, through your sacrifice, through your blood, through the cross. Lord, that we, we can walk into the Holy of Holies and boldly make our requests, and we do so today. Ah, Lord, we, we ask for your intervention in, in the affairs of this world, um, Lord, to help those in need. We uh, think especially of... Uh, uh, those who have been become victims of uh, this earthquake in Turkey and Syria, Lord, the, the families that have lost loved ones, those who have lost their homes, those who are needing food and shelter and care, uh, Lord, we simply put them in your hands that they may get the, the resources and care they need. Lord, hear our prayer, and in your love, answer. And we continue to pray for Ukraine, that there might be an end to that war, Lord. It's been about a year now, and... Uh, Lord, we pray that uh, you would bring peace, you would stop the hostility and the, and the destruction. Lord, we put that in your hands. Lord, hear our prayer and in your love, answer. And we, we continue to wrestle with COVID and the restrictions and uh, the, the dangers. Um, Lord, we thank you for mean, ways and means that uh, we've been given to, 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 to battle this for the vaccines and, and the care we've received. Uh, Lord, Help us to continue to be wise and, and vigilant. Oh, Lord, watch over those in the, in the medical profession and in the healthcare services, Lord, that uh, are helping others and those who are vulnerable. And we, we lift our healthcare system to you while we're thinking about it, Lord, that you may, we thank you for it. And we pray that you would continue to guard it uh, for the, the benefit of our people. Lord, hear our prayer. Love, answer. Lord, we think of the family of John Bond, of Graham Reed, Kim Roberts, Barb Stevenson, Gwen Atkinson, Judy Grant, Matthew Thompson, Brandon and Petra, Ernie and Linda Collette. Lord, hear our prayer, and in your love, answer. We pray for Jennifer Flatman and Bonnie Jackson, for Ryan, Lois Rigney, her brother Roy Riddell, Max Ward Sr., Carolyn Argarides, Margaret Mark, Eleanor, Craig Nickel, Vicki, and Jane Johnston. 
Lord, hear our prayer, and in your love, answer. We remember Brian Newstead, Ted Schultes, Alex Buxey, Jessica, Corey, Don, Isabel Jolly, Walt Griffin Jr., Victoria Ancaster, Paul, Kelsey Burnham. Lord, hear our prayer, and in your love, answer. And we remember John and Millie Payne, Ron Mark Jr., Mark and Teresa Beach, Carol Parnell, Chris Rusk, Don and Karen Tran, Darko Knezovich, Steve Wigan, and others that we bring to you in the quiet of our hearts. Lord, hear our prayer, and in your love, answer, for we pray all of this in the name of Jesus Christ, our loving, gracious Savior. Amen. I'm going to call Janice back up to, <clears throat> to read our scripture. Hopefully, I got the right one. Read what you have here. Do the prayer and all that. Might have to fit a pusher. Camera got moved or something. Prayer of Illumination. Join with me, please. Gracious God, God give, give us humble, humble teachable, teachable, and obedient hearts that, that we may receive what you have revealed and do what you have commanded through Jesus, Jesus our Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. Yay! So the scripture today is from Matthew 17, verses 1 to 9, and it is entitled... Um, transfiguration. After six days, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John, the brother of James, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. There he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as the light. Just then there appeared before them Moses and Elijah. Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, a bright cloud covered them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell face down to the ground, terrified. But Jesus came and touched them. Get up, he said, don't be afraid. When they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus instructed them, don't tell anyone what you have seen until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. May God bless this reading of his holy word. Thank you, Janice. Let us sing together, uh, Fairest Lord Jesus. Let, let that creak. <laughs> Let's stand. Fairest Lord Jesus. Amen. Uh -huh. 
<coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Let me find my passage. Hmm? Oh, I've got I've got the the controls here. Oh, for centered. Um if I could be here then I could see myself if you can move me over. No, he can he can fuzz me over there. Okay, that's a bit better. Perfect. Let's pray. Lord, as we think about your word today, we ask for your help, your uh, your revelation, that you would fill us with your Holy Spirit and teach us and open our eyes to see, our ears to hear, and our hearts to understand what you have for us today. In your name we pray, Jesus Christ, our living Savior, our Lord. Amen. Okay. Call this the reveal, and I love this picture. I wonder if I've got a, I've got this a better laser here that Paul gave me. You can't see it online, sorry, but so this this picture of Jesus, I like it because it's more real. <laughs> it's funny how all the Western depictions of Jesus are very white. So, but Jesus was a Middle Eastern guy, probably very brown. So this this to me struck me as as a little bit better. So uh, the Transfiguration Sunday, the last Sunday in the season of Epiphany. You'll all be thinking. Um, hence, uh, and and the, the, the theme of Epiphany is about light, you know, the light shining in the darkness. It starts out with the why, and the, kind of the, uh, with this idea that the Gentiles live in darkness, but, but the light of God, the light of Jesus, is now coming to the whole world through Jesus. Uh, and the, the, the earliest story is, is the, wise, the story of the wise men, because they're Gentiles who come to visit and, and meet uh, the baby Jesus. So the light is dawning upon them already. So that's the, that's the beginning of Epiphany. It was back in January. We're on uh, to the end of it now. And the Transfiguration is always uh, Transfiguration Sunday, the last Sunday in Epiphany. So, uh, and, and this whole theme of the revelation, you know, the revealing, uh, the light is very much in this, in this passage. Um, I, I, I like this one. If, if you're an HGTV watcher, <laughs> uh, the reveal is a big... Uh, you know, a lot of us watch those shows. There's like 70,000 of them on the HGTV, Dif- different ones, different different con- contractors and different couples, and sometimes they're fixing the outside, sometimes they're fixing the inside, sometimes they're fixing the swimming pool. <laughs> you just got all these variations. But, you know, once, you know, once they're all done, so th- this one, I forget which one this is, but uh, in, this, in this particular one, um, they have a big picture made up of the old house, the way it was before they fixed it and renovated it and got it all nice. And then at the end of the show, they have the couple stand in front of the big picture of the old picture, and then they slide the, slide the picture apart and they reveal the new uh, renovated house. So they get to see uh, what, it's, what it's become. Uh, so that's, you know, the word reveal is used a lot. So that's what this was. The, this event in Jesus' ministry was uh, a huge revelation. I mean, Jesus would have looked to the people of his day like all the rest of us, you know, just a regular guy eating and drinking and walking around and uh, sleeping. And, you know, he was, he was a human being. And, uh, you know, they, it was not particularly apparent just exactly who he was. This, this particular uh, uh, story tends to be basically in the middle of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Uh, so they start, of course, with Jesus' birth and Jesus, the beginning of his, his ministry. Then there's this kind of lovely part where, you know, we, we get his teachings and his miracles. And, uh, and then this kind of is kind of at the center. It's kind of the peak uh, where he is revealed just to the three disciples, the inner three. And then from that point on, basically, he, he starts to head towards Jerusalem. I wouldn't say it all goes downhill, but in a sense, it does. Because he's heading for Jerusalem where he will suffer and they will abandon him and he will, he will be crucified and he will die for us. Uh, and, and then, of course, he rises from the dead. But that, the, the, this, so this part is actually represents a kind of a peak period in the, in the gospel narrative. And I don't know if you can tell which one's which there. That's uh, um, if we can just see if we can figure out who's who. This, either this is Moses or Elijah. And I, I have trouble telling the difference. Um, then there's Peter and James and John down at the bottom, and they're terrified. 
They're freaked out because because they they don't know what they're what, they start to babble almost incoherently with great ideas and and then they hear this voice. So, <laughs> um, they were getting what I'm calling clues as to who Jesus really is. These are clues. They're pretty huge clues. Um, what are those clues? Well, visual for starters. There he was, transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as the light. And just then there appeared before them Moses and Elijah, talking with Jesus. So, you know, by the way, Moses and Elijah have been dead for hundreds of years at this point. (laughs) So this was quite something for them to see. Now, it doesn't explain to us, and I remember having this talk at seminary, you know, how did they know it was Moses and Elijah? (laughs) You know? So, you know, the, the scriptures are revelatory. So at some point, the scripture writers were, uh, were informed. Um, I, can, I really don't have a, a, a logical answer to that. They knew. Auditory. They, could, they hear this voice. So, I mean, you can't see anybody, but there's this big, big voice. This is my son whom I love. With him, I am well pleased. Listen to him. Now, it's not often you hear just voices with nobody there coming from above. Uh, but this is the second time now in the Gospels this has happened, and almost the same words are spoken. So remember when Jesus was baptized, uh, he comes up out of the water, and the, the Spirit descends on him as a dove, and there's a voice that says, this is my beloved Son with whom I am well pleased. The same thing. This, this, now this scripture adds that little thing. Listen to him. Listen to him. So that's key here today. So another clue, uh, visual auditory, number three, cultural, I'm calling it cultural memory, uh, cultural for Jews of Jesus' day, because they, their culture was not like our culture. They did not have TV or movies or shopping malls or hockey games or concerts, <laughs> all those things which, uh, you know, are just kind of commonplace for us. Nah. So they were a people of the book. They had synagogues and a big cultural community thing would be getting to, going to, to synagogue on Sabbath, which is Saturday, and, uh, and hearing the scriptures read, because they, you know, they wouldn't even have their own copies. They would be read there, but they memorized them largely, so they, and, they, and then they would talk and remember the, the, the stories. Um, so the stories, for instance, of Moses and Elijah were huge stories. Elijah is representative of the prophets, of uh, the Hebrew prophets, and Moses, of course, as the, the one who brought the law. So just if we think about this for a minute, Uh, it's an interesting story, parallel story to our story today. The Lord descended to the top of Mount Sinai and called Moses to the top of the mountain. So Moses went up, and Moses there receives the the two tablets, the Ten Commandments, on on the tablets of clay. Uh, So Moses has this encounter with God up on a mountain. Hmm, he's having an encounter with somebody on top of a mountain again. Interesting. And Elijah... Uh, so Elijah, uh, similarly, got up. He says he got up. This is from 1 Kings 19, 8, 9. By the way, this, I've, I've referenced this in my Lenten letter, which hopefully you will read or get sometime this week. Um, it's got this 40, because it's got this 40-day thing in it. Uh, he got up and strengthened by that food. He traveled 40 days and 40 nights until he reached Horeb, the mountain of God. So Horeb is another name for Sinai. So it's actually the same mountain that Moses was up on. There he went into a cave and spent the night. And the word of the Lord came to him, what are you doing here, Elijah? <laughs> so, uh, and so he encounters and hears and talks with God up back on Mount Sinai. So he's a, the prophet in later days, Moses the law, uh, Elijah the prophet, that they encounter God up in the mountain. Here they are again, encountering God, uh, Jesus, up on the mountain. So this, this is a, uh, a clue as to who it is we're dealing with here. So they, they had those clues we don't. We don't have those same ones, except we have the record of them. So what are our clues? I mean, how, how will you and I know in the 20, what, which century we're? They keep flashing by. 21st century. So, yeah, 2023. Uh, what are our clues? Well, you know, we have the record of them, and we have, we have Scripture. It's an amazing clue. Uh, for those of you that don't recognize that book, back in the day, when you were in grade 5, the Gideon Bible. They gave us the Gideon Bible, and the New Testament and the Psalms. That's this, this thing here. So, um, and actually, I was in Lachlan. There was a young fellow who's just in his 20, early 20s, and he said he got one. So, 
Maybe they're still doing it a bit even then. I don't think it's happening anymore now. Nobody they won't allow that sort of thing. But if you started reading it from cover to cover, when I first started reading the New Testament, it blew me away, like, for myself. I was like 17, 18 years old. I was just, the words of Jesus started leaping at me, and it was like, wow. Uh, it was a huge clue as to who he was. I think this is a big clue because Jesus satisfies and answers so many universal human longings. For instance, the need for love. You know, we're all very uh, engaged. Main, our main thing in life, family, friends, community, uh, you know, the need for love. Last night we had this show and the community was out there. You know, people just wanted to get together again. That's part of the thing. COVID has ripped people apart and people haven't been had the opportunities and, and uh, occasions to get together. So when they get that chance, they really come out like crazy. Uh, and Jesus is all about that. I mean, Jesus taught that. He lived that. He hung out with the people. Um, he, he, you know, he, he was, uh, he didn't try to pull himself away from the crowds. He was in the crowds. I mean, his teachings basically were love your neighbor as yourself. This is my commandment, that you love one another. It's all, he's all about that. Uh, and truth. Truth is so much under attack these days, you know, you know, fake news and all this stuff, and people are, are starving for truth. What is true? And they wonder if they can even find out what's true. And Jesus straight up says, I am the truth. I am the way and the truth and the life. And he says, you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And he's very, uh, very engaged with truth. Um, he answers that. Freedom. We all need freedom. We long for freedom. We look for freedom. And Jesus came to bring freedom to, the human, to human lives and to human hearts. I mean, we, so much of the world is oppressed by political, uh, you know, lack of freedom. We're, we're fortunate. We have a lot of freedom that way. But even when we do, uh, we can still get kind of enslaved. Uh, I think it's not a bad word, by our habits and our, our addictions and our, um, you know, those kinds of things uh, that, that corner us and trap us. And Jesus came to deliver us from those things as well. And he does. Equality threw in. Uh, you know, we, we were praying in Lachlan this morning maybe for uh, women in Iran, because it's a big story these days that, you know, are struggling. They're being oppressed. Some of them are being killed um, just so that they can, you know, uh, have some level of equality or, or education, those kinds of things, and it's being suppressed. And Jesus was so out there with, uh, I think he's the source of so much drive for equality in our world. I mean, he, 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 he brought women front and center and, and children and lepers, the sick who were outcasts and the Samaritans who were foreigners, you know, he, uh, uh, you know, he, he included people, he included everybody. And, you know, I think a universal human longing is eternal life. You know, what happens to me when I die? I need to know the answer. It's, it's, and Jesus provides that. In the, in the gospel reading that um, Janice read, it's interesting that, that uh, so that clue is in the text. It says, as they were coming down the mountain, Jesus instructed them, don't tell anyone what you have seen until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. <laughs> and the resurrection from the dead is a huge clue. And it's historically, you know, basically verifiable that this actually happened. Um, and it answers that question, you know. Jesus straight up just says, whoever believes in me, though they die, yet shall they live. Uh, so he meets this, this universal human need. Um, that's, so a couple, th three, the evidence of Christians in the church. I think we have this, you know, historically we have this. Uh, things like you know, the establishment of, of medical facilities and, uh, and, and schools. You know, the history of those is pretty much entirely Christian stuff. Christian, like, like, so the red, I put the Red Cross up there as a sign of it because uh, the Red Cross was based on the cross, the cross of Christ. And, you know, it's originally a Christian organization. And so much of, uh, uh, you know, the drive for, for health and wholeness in our world has, has come from that. Um, and at public education. So this is this is uh, the the crest for Loyola University in Chicago. Well, it's named after Ignatius Loyola. He, together with Francis Xavier, <laughs> they were some of the the early pioneers of the the Jesuit movement, the Jesuit order, which was a relatively new order in the Catholic Church. I mean, they had the they had the Franciscans, they had the Benedictines, they had the Dominicans. They'd been around for hundreds of years. 
And they were basically cloistered types that would, you know, go, go in their monasteries and kind of keep out of society. The Jesuits came along here a few hundred years ago and said, you know what, we got to get into the society. You know, we got to bring Christ in. And uh, uh, they went to corners of the world. They went to Asia. They went to South America. They went North America. They went all over the place. Um, and uh, one of their things was, let's bring public education to Europe and wherever we go. And they really pushed to this thing. Everybody should be able to read. Back in their day, of course, most people couldn't. You know, people should be literate. People should have an ed- education. And they, they really were the, the starters of that whole movement towards public education. And, and they were Jesuits. In fact, Society of Jesus. J- jesus Jesuits. William Wilberforce. I like to bring him back again. again. Strong Christian man, a parliamentarian in England at the turn of the, as the 1800-ish uh, came out the turn of that century, about 200 years ago. And, uh, you know, he was uh, critical for the abolition of slavery in England. I think Wilberforce, I believe the town Wilberforce here in Highlands East is named after this guy, <laughs> William Wil- Wilberforce. He was such a, such a prominent figure and just, just doggedly, year after year, kept bringing the bill into uh, Parliament in England until they finally abolished slavery. Huge. And then I just threw in, you know, Christians being kind to others. I think that's a huge evidence. <laughs> you know, uh, that God calls us to be that evidence to our world of, of loving our neighbor, you know, helping them out when they're bereaved or they're struggling, bringing them some food, that kind of stuff. Now, all that, the, the biggest clue for us is always the work of the Holy Spirit. None of us know who Jesus is or put our trust and faith in Jesus unless the Holy Spirit is at work in our hearts and lives. And if you are a believer in Christ, and uh, you, you, you realize that that's the case. The, the reason is because the Holy Spirit has convinced you, convicted you of, of who Jesus is. So he's key. You know, and so this is what it says. This is my son whom I love. With him, I am well pleased. Listen to him. Uh, I, uh, I've been reading a book by Eugene Peterson. Ever heard of Eugene Peterson? Um. You know, a, a Eugene Peterson, but this is a very... So he wrote, he wrote a, a paraphrase of the Bible here a few years ago called The Message. And a lot of people listening here will, online will know this book. Sometimes, from time to time, we preachers quote from it. So it's a paraphrase. It's not an exact translation, but the guy was brilliant. He was deeply, uh, you know, a, 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 a deep disciple of Christ. Very, uh, I think he died like last year, just, just recently. So he wrote a book, and I'm reading this book now. It's called Christ Plays in 10,000 Places. Interesting title. Christ Plays in 10,000 Places. Anyway, he's just talking about the centrality of Jesus to the Christian faith and how Jesus grounds us. Because um, there's this huge tendency to, for everybody to do their own thing and think up their own way and be spiritual, and, you know, uh, people invoking all kinds of spirituality. Um, So this is what he writes, and I thought it was insightful. By accepting Jesus as the final and definitive revelation of God, the Christian church makes it impossible for us to make up our own customized variations of the spiritual life and get away with it. Not that we don't try, but we can't get around him or away from him. Jesus is the incarnation of God, God among us and with us. Jesus gathered up God's words, spoken to and through God's people, and given to us in our holy scriptures. He spoke them personally to us. He performed God's works of healing and compassion, forgiveness and salvation, love and sacrifice among us. Men and women with personal names, with personal histories. You go through the Gospels, you hear all these things. Because Jesus was born in Bethlehem, grew up in Nazareth, gathered disciples in Galilee, worshipped in synagogues, ate meals in Bethany, went to a wedding in Cana, told stories in Jericho, prayed in Gethsemane, led a parade down the Mount of Olives, taught in the Jerusalem temple, was killed on the hill Golgotha, and three days later had supper with Cleopas and his friend in Emmaus. So he's just talking about the the actual geography and the actual names of places and people, of the concrete things that that Jesus was all about as we went through the Gospels. And I'm going to jump ahead in this passage. Jesus keeps our feet on the ground, attentive to children, in conversation with ordinary people, sharing meals with friends and and strangers, 
listening to the wind, observing the wildflowers, touching the sick and wounded, praying simply and unselfconsciously. Jesus insists that we deal with God right here and now, in the place we find ourselves and with the people we are with. Jesus is God here and now. I thought this was a, a, a very insightful way to put how Jesus grounds us and uh, makes us concrete, um, because it's, and it's true. So, this is my son whom I love, with him I'm well pleased. Listen to him. So, you know, we have to learn to listen. There's, there's courses, teaching and, listen, <laughs> and learning listening skills that you can go and take so you can learn to listen. I've, 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 you know, some of the people online here will attest to this. Uh, sometimes... Husbands don't listen very well to their wives. I don't know if you ever noticed that. I, we had an occasion this week as we were preparing a meal. Um, I, I, I was asked to uh, chop up some, uh, uh, some squash, and I diligently peeled this acorn squash and was chopping it all up, and, and uh, Peggy comes and says, well, what, what, are you, what are you doing down there, chopping all that stuff? That's a lot of work, by the way, acorn squash. I don't know if you've ever done it. <laughs> it's really annoying. <laughs> says, I didn't ask you to do that. I just said chop them in two so I could cook them in the oven. <laughs> I was like, you weren't listening. Ah, yes. Yeah. I'm working on it, but you know, I'm a, uh, what's that? I'm in progress. A work in progress. Thank you. We're, we're work to, works in progress. But, but God calls us to listen to Jesus, not just hear, but listen to him, to absorb the things he's telling us and teaching us, because he is the truth. Um, Paul Tillich says, the first duty of love is to listen. I don't know if that's true, but it's interesting. It's insightful. You know, the first, if you're going to tell people you love them, you got you to be listening to them too. And if we're going to tell God we love God and Jesus we love Jesus, need to be listening to him. Listen to him. Uh, didn't change that. Mark 9. So that's the transfiguration in Mark. Same story. Same. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we so often don't listen to you, so we pray that you would work our hearts and open our hearts to know that your voice is the voice of of light and truth and love and grace. And uh, Lord, we thank you for this revelation of yourself that uh, we read about in Scripture. And may you continue to reveal yourself to us, Lord, in our day-to-day lives. We thank you that you're with us every step of the way and all our dealings with one another and our our walk through life, through the, through the ups and the downs and the difficulties. Uh, Lord, we thank you that you are there at every turn. Uh, Lord, open our eyes to see you, uh, our, our wonderful Savior, Jesus, in all the light that, is, that, that comes from you and uh, is shed upon our world. Lord, for this we give you thanks and praise. Uh, and let us pray together the, the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We are going to sing, Be Thou My Vision, O Lord of My Heart.
Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit rest and remain with each one of us, both now and always. Amen. We go now in peace. Oh, got it.